Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. I wash away. Hello and welcome to Saturday's Easter Together at Home. I hope this message finds you doing well. It is a beautiful day. I don't know if you can hear the bees in this tree behind me, but they are definitely awake early this morning to join us. I truly enjoyed our Good Friday service last night. Boy, that was just beautiful. Um, John and Talia's uh, worship was gorgeous, and Pastor Billy's message, as always, was very encouraging. I want to say I've really enjoyed doing these videos. Kind of, double-edged sword. I've truly been blessed, uh, though it's been very stressful and challenging. Knowing what to say each day, filming it, lighting, sound, where to stand, you know, what are the background noises, editing, posting, and this is all new to me and it's new to the church. Um, I can't believe how hard it must be to be a teacher right now with all the expectations that people have for teachers to somehow know how to teach online overnight. Ooh. Very difficult. So when you get a chance, thank your teachers, uh, your kids' teachers. Um, so why do I say I'm truly blessed? Well, because I have Donna helping me with content each and every day. She is so wise. Um, every day we, we talk and um, I, I'm stressing out and panicking over what to say the next day's video. And she talks me off the ledge. She helps me with the outline points and also with content. And I have Joel helping me with uh, filming and with editing. Um, and I have Pastor Billy and many of you encouraging me with all the kind words, so thank you very much. But today I want to look at what happened on Saturday. Saturday in the lives of the disciples. We've been looking at the events of this um, day by day of the Holy Week as they play out this Holy Week. And on Sunday we had the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday. We had Jesus cleansing the temple and overturning the tables on Monday. Um, on Tuesday, Judas betrays Jesus, and somewhere in there, Mary is anointed the feet of uh, uh, Jesus, anointed Jesus before his burial. And Wednesday, we really don't know what happened, but it was probably preparation for Passover, and um, Jesus was in Bethany, and he was teaching. Thursday is the Last Supper. Jesus is betrayed by Judas. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying, Gee, Lord, take this cup from me. Uh, Jesus is betrayed, and his trial begins. Friday, Jesus is tried, found guilty, crucified, and buried. But what happened on Saturday? The scriptures are pretty silent about that. But before we go into that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this holy week, these, these lessons, the, the, this, the, the content that we've been looking at as it leads up to your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Lord, we just thank you. I pray, Lord, that if you have something to say to us today, that we are listening and we can apply that to our lives. You are a great God and worthy of our praise. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what did the scriptures, the scriptures say um, the disciples were doing on Saturday? Well, it was Sabbath, so we know that we're, they're supposed to be really doing nothing. The Bible is pretty silent about Saturday, but there's a lot of speculation on the internet. We're not going to talk about that. When we read the, the events of the Holy Week, I try to put myself into the disciples' place. Whenever I read uh, the Bible, I try to put myself into the audience's place. Um, how would I respond after seeing Jesus betrayed, captured, put on trial, falsely accused, found guilty, and nailed to a cross until dead and then buried? What would my emotions have been? Where would I have gone? What would I do? These There are three things that really come to rise to the top for me when I put myself into this story as one of the disciples. And the first thing that stands out has to be fear. Fear for my life. The man who raised people from the dead is now dead. The man who could calm the seas is now dead. The man who could curse a fig tree and make it wither and die is dead. The man I believe to be the Messiah, the promised deliverer of the Jewish nation, he's dead. And I was one of his followers, his students, his disciples. I'm next. So as for me, I'm hiding for fear on Saturday and probably for many more days after that. John 20 verses 19 tells, verse 19 tells us that Sunday evening the disciples were meeting behind locked doors, 
because they were, they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. I would say that it's safe to say that they were hiding in the same room on Saturday also. Yeah, I would say it was safe to say that they were hiding in fear. One of the things that happened uh, is one of the things that happened on Saturday. That hiding in fear was definitely one of the things that happened on Saturday. Let me say it that way. And doubt. I would say doubt. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, I know that there had to be a lot of doubt at this time in their lives. What must the disciples have been thinking when Jesus was crucified? What would you have thought? How did um, He did not fulfill the prophecy he said he was going to fulfill. They thought that the power of God had been revealed to them, and now he's dead. This man they had dedicated their lives to seemed to be a liar. Everything that they believed was a lie. The disciples were full of doubt in the very cause, in the very man who they had committed their lives to. Doubt and fear was going on on Saturday in the lives of the disciples, for sure. Number three, and I don't know why I put it on the list at number three, because it's got to be a hard number one for the disciples, and that's grief. Grief has to be at the top of the list. If I were one of those disciples, I know that the number one emotion that I would have would be grief. I would be hiding in that room out of fear, yes, but I'd be under the covers, so grief-stricken that I would never want to come out. Jesus, my best friend, is dead. I've eaten every meal with him for three years. He's now dead. He's my teacher. I've given up fishing. I've given up tax collecting. I've given up my family. I've given up everything to follow this man I believe is the Messiah, and now he's dead. I love Jesus. I know Jesus, and he knows me. I love what he's done for me, and I love what he's done for others. I've said that I was going to follow him no matter what. Peter says I would go to jail. Peter said I would die for you, and now Jesus is dead. My closest friend, the man that I love and respect, is dead. And the way he died was unjust, and it was brutal, and it was public. Jesus had told them multiple times throughout the Gospels that he was going to die and come back in three days. Um, he said this in Mark 18, 31 through 34. He said this again in, um, excuse me, in Luke 18, 31 through 34. And he said it again in Mark 9, 30 through 32. I'm going to read that one for you. Leaving that region, and they traveled through Galilee. Jesus didn't want anyone to know he was there, for he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later he will rise from the dead. They didn't understand what he was saying, however, however and they were afraid to ask him what he meant. But it says they didn't understand. They don't believe, uh, and it doesn't register in their mind that Jesus is going to die and raise again. I don't want to throw shade on the disciples. I don't want, I don't know if, if I would get it either. I wouldn't want to hear Jesus say, I'm going to die. I trust that this man is the ruler of Israel and is going to wipe out the Roman people um, and, and bring us back our promised Jerusalem. I feel that these men and women, um, I feel their pain and their grief must be unimaginable. So what was happening on Saturday? Once again, I'm not 100% sure. This is my speculation, but I know that I would be shut in my room, under my covers, crying from grief. I would be consumed with fear for my life, and I'd be full of doubt. But thank God, praise God, and thank Jesus. On Sunday, all fear is gone. All doubt is replaced with the knowledge that Jesus is the risen King. And grief is replaced with extreme joy. We all face doubt. We all face fear. We all face grief. The disciples had the truth right there with them, but it wasn't clicking in their minds. Emotions had taken over. We all face doubt. We all face fear. We all face grief. And we have right here in our Bibles God's Word to replace that fear, to replace that grief, and to replace that doubt. We have the events of Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to reflect on, to replace that grief, fear, and doubt. I want to encourage you to be bold and invite a friend to Easter service tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
online with YouTube or Facebook Premiere to hear the whole gospel message. The whole gospel message. It doesn't end on Friday. It doesn't end on Saturday. The story begins on Sunday. Jesus is risen. God bless. Stay safe. We'll see you online tomorrow.